45. Please give me some liberty. I was I went to work this morning. I uh, got there probably around I don't know around 7:15 or so, and um, my new job I, I get the benefit of pacing back and forth and praying for a little while, and and it was it's good for me. Um, and I and I got to reading some scripture and. Uh, I got a little sticky note and I started scratching some notes down. And, and so I want to give you what I feel like the Lord has given me. And re in reality, this psalm has been on my heart for uh, about a week now. Uh, and I was reading it this morning and just scratched some things down. Uh, one more time, if you would, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love and appreciate you. We thank you for this service tonight. I thank you, God, for what's already been felt here god i believe lord you're you're gonna help us and i'm asking you to help me god i really want to do a good job tonight i want to be a blessing to the church god i really want to i really want to put you in the center of it all because really that's why we're all here we're not here to be entertained by songs and we're not here to be entertained by preaching god preaching's not the purpose of preaching is not to entertain but God, we do want to know you and we do want to have relationship with you. And that's why we are here tonight. And so I pray, God, that something that would be said tonight would be a blessing to each one of us. And everybody say in Jesus name, you may be seated. It's already kind of different, huh? I didn't even read any scripture. Um. Keep, keep the Bible open right there to Psalm 145. The reason why I didn't read Scripture to you is because I'm actually planning on reading it all. And there are uh, 21 verses in this particular Psalm. And we're just going to kind of work our way through it tonight. And I, I really, Sister Rosa, I don't anticipate being long. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of notes. But we'll just see what happens. Amen. Amen. The title of this psalm in my Bible or the heading over this psalm says, David praises God for his goodness and for his special favor for the righteous. And so for a little while tonight, I really just want to brag on God. You know, we spend a lot of time talking about the bad and uh, you know, I've been guilty of it. I spend a lot of services preaching about problems and preaching about trouble because I really don't want you to make a mess out of your life. I, I want you to live for God. I want you to make wise decisions. But but in spite of all of that, all the bad and, and the things that are going on in the world that we could talk about, it, and, and bless God, they need to be talked about and preached about, but but tonight I want to focus on the good. Tonight I want to brag on God's goodness. I wonder if God's been good to anybody in the house. I wonder if anybody's grateful to be in the church, to be a part of the kingdom of God, to be spirit filled and water baptized in Jesus name. So this is definitely going to be a positive message. I'm really trying, Brother Dunn. Praise God. So let's just start out at the beginning. Let's start out at Psalm, uh, Psalm 145 and verse number 1 where David says it like this. He says, I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee. And I will praise thy name forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Bless God. I told you it's going to be a little bit different tonight. We're just going to read scripture and we're going to talk about it. That word extol just simply means to lift and to exalt. And when I was looking a little bit deeper into it, Sister Eileen, it literally is connected with your mouth. It's talking about lifting up your voice. It's talking about making a loud noise and express yourself to God. He said, I will bless thy name forever and forever. In the next verse, he says, I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to praise thy name forever and forever. I wonder if there's any 
Jesus' name, people in the house of God. Oh, do we not love the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, I could preach a long time about the name tonight. Brother Dunn, he's been pushing on me. He says, every time you see that word name, it means nature. When you got baptized in the name of Jesus, when you got the name of Jesus applied to your life, you got a brand new nature, my friend. You don't act the same. You don't talk the same. You don't do the same. You, my God, you're going to be Christ-like. Till Christ be formed in us. He says, I'm going to extol. I'm going to lift you. I'm going to use my mouth. Hey, hallelujah. You know what? If all you can do is clap your hands or tap your toe to praise God, that's good enough for me. But if you're able to lift your voice and you're able to extol him and you're able to give him your words aloud and just let him know, God, I appreciate you. God, I recognize you've been good to me. He said, every day, every day, hallelujah, will I bless thee. I'm not going to let not one day go by, he said, where I don't lift up my voice and bless the name of the Lord. Where I don't lift up my voice and praise thy name forever and ever. Every day. Not just on Sunday. Not just Tuesday night prayer meetings. Not just Thursday midweek Bible study, but every day I will bless thee. Hallelujah. Come on. Verse number three. I love this. We, we quote this. We praise this. We sing this. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. He's great. I said he's great. Somebody said he's great. Our praise is an indicator. He is, if he is great, then he is greatly to be praised. And our measure of praise is a measure of his greatness. So you know what? When we give him just a little bit of praise, he's just going to be a little bit great. But if you're willing to lift him up every day, and you're willing to give him some greatly praise, I'm telling you, we serve a great God. Is he great, church? If he's been really great to you, you're going to give him some really great praise. You're not going to give him no second-rate praise. You're not going to give him your second-best praise. You're not going to give him anything less than what you give everything else out in the world or what you give others out in this world. You're going to give him your best praise. He's greatly to be praised. Amen. This is our running church. What kind of church is this? It's an apostolic church. It's a tongue talking, I'll running, Jesus name, Pentecostal apostolic, great praise in church. I like this part. I like this part. Look at what it says, verse three. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Yeah. And His greatness is unsearchable. Oh, yeah. That's oh. right. That's good. God's greatness is unfathomable. It is beyond our human comprehension. I like what the scripture says about the Holy Ghost, about it being the earnest of our inheritance. It means it's the down payment. Everything that we experience, the greatness of God that we experience in this life. Can I tell you, folks, it's just a drop in the bucket. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Because really, God's greatness is unsearchable. You'll never know in this life, hallelujah, just how great God has been to you. In our ignorance, we'll never understand how many times God protected you and God kept you and God spared your life because he's been so great. 
We serve a great God, folks. God's greatness cannot be exhausted. It is beyond finding out. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it when we sing the songs like, How Great Thou Art. I love it when I can make statements like, God is good. And you respond by saying all the time. And I respond by saying it all the time. God is good. Isn't he good to us, church? Oh, we know that he's good. We know that he is great to us. But can I tell you, in reality, in reality, we have not yet begun to even plumb the depths of God's greatness. Right, right, right. Oh, he's been so good to us. But I'm telling you, the greatness of God is unsearchable. And it stretches far beyond anything that you or I or even we together can imagine. We can get you to stand up one by one all over this church. And you can testify and you can tell us about how great God's been to you. And, and it may be different than the one behind you or the one next to you. And, and all of the dimensions of God's goodness and all of the degrees of God's greatness and we will never even plumb the depths because God's greatness is unsearchable hallelujah oh that God would give us a greater revelation of his greatness I'm telling you folks that he delivered me from drugs and I think he's so great for it oh he emptied my refrigerator of all the alcohol and my cabinets of every bit of liquor and he's so great for it but can I tell you his greatness it far exceeds and expands what he's done for me and it far and exceeds what he's done for you his great oh hallelujah I'm just trying to brag on our great God and our Savior just what you've experienced what we have oh hallelujah we can sing songs like sister wagner sang tonight about i choose to be a christian and you know what if all this was a fairy tale this is still the best life and i'm gonna live it anyhow i thank god it's not a fairy tale i thank god we've got a reward that we're looking forward to but can i tell you as great as living for god is right now it gets so much greater this is just the down payment. It's just the earnest. It's the earnest of our endeavor. Let's move on. Verse number four. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty. Yeah. The acts of God are mighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but let me tell you something. The only way they're going to find out is when a mama tells her daughter. The only way the next generation's going to find out is when a man or a woman or a grandparent tells their little ones, we've got to share this thing. His goodness, the way that he is to us, was designed to be shared from one generation to the next. David's saying to us as we read this psalm, he's saying, look, folks, God has been so great. The only way the people are going to find out about it is if you and I tell them. Go tell somebody about the greatness of God, about God's mighty acts. Folks, that is the biblical model. That's the design of God. All the way from the beginning, God designed it to, to be passed on from one generation to the next. How? By word of mouth. Yeah, yeah, That's why he could say he chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It's the word of God coming from the mouth of men and women just like us. That's how God's mercies, hallelujah, and his deliverances have always been handed down. 
That's why we can turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and he tells us that you are to teach them diligently to your children. When you're sitting down and when you're walking by the way and when you're, when you're lying down and when you're rising up, every opportunity you get, mama, every opportunity you get, daddy, grandpa and grandma and brother and sister and friend and neighbor and co-worker, every opportunity you get, you got to be willing to tell of God's mighty acts. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. somebody yeah. of his greatness. Yeah. Has he been great to you? Do you got something worth sharing with somebody else? I know you do. I know you do. Because I'm looking at blessed people. I'm looking at people that have been blessed. I'm looking at people, hallelujah, that have been touched by God. And they've experienced the mercies of God and the deliverances of God. And we've got to tell the next generation. David said from generation to generation. He said, one generation shall praise thy works to another. Yeah. And then he goes on in verse number five. And he says, all right, I'll be the example. I'll be the one that steps up. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty. Oh, we're talking about the king of Israel here. But he's looking at a king that far exceeds him. He's looking at a majesty that is far above him. And he's saying, I'm going to speak of thy glorious honor. And thy majesty. And thy wonderful, wondrous works. David said, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to let everybody know. I'm going to tell others what God has done. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, children of God. It is every child of God's responsibility to go. Uh -huh. There is a go uh -huh. in the gospel. Yes. And that's not just for preachers. Uh -huh. It's not just for preachers wise. It's not just for a select few in the church. It is for every disciple of Christ to go. We got to go and tell it. Back in school, we used to have show and tell. Now, as children of God, we got to go and tell. You got to go and you got to tell it. You got to share with somebody what God has done. Has he been good to you? Let's move on. Hallelujah. Am I taking too long? No. It's going to get better, Sister Dunn. Hallelujah. 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 I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> Psalm chapter 6. I'm sorry. Psalm chapter 145, verse 6. And men shall speak of the mighty. Men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness. Yes. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness. And shall sing of thy righteousness. Yes. I, I tell you, when I was reading that, and look, you know what? I'm, I'm not smart enough to have all this figured out. To, you know, but, but when I was reading that, it was talking about men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts. And then David goes on and says, and I will declare thy goodness or thy greatness. It just makes me think about all the people that are running around. You know, it doesn't matter what people have to say about God. I'm going to tell somebody about his goodness. Hey, I don't care about what all these backsliders are doing running around here, what they got to say about God and about his church. He's been too good to me. I'm not even going to give ear to all of that. God's been great. He is great, and he's greatly to be praised. I'm telling you, folks, there's too much good to be given ear to the bad. Hey, I've got too much good to tell you about what God has done and what God is currently doing. Tell you something, folks, I was bound up. I was living in Egypt. I, man, the, the harsh taskmasters of Egypt. Man, when I woke up every morning feeling like I had to have a cigarette or had to have a Budweiser to get over the, the one from the night before. But let me tell you something. God brought me out with a strong hand. Oh, I, I came out under the power of the blood of the Lamb. Anybody else know he's been so good. 
Hallelujah. Has he brought you out? When you look through the Bible, you look through the word. And like Deuteronomy chapter six, for example, when 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 Moses was telling them, you got to tell it when they're when they're sitting down at the dinner table, when you're driving your car down the road, when when you're walking by the way, every chance you get, you got to tell them what God has done. Yeah. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about telling them how God brought you out of yeah. Egypt. Yeah. Let them know how good God's been to our family. Let them know. That you know what? They didn't have to be raised up in a godly home. They didn't have to be raised up in a home where prayer was a regular thing that, to be heard. They didn't have to wait, be raised up in a home where you got a messed up snotty couch cushion from it being an altar. But God's been good to them. I want my kids to know God's been good to them. Yes, yes. yes. Let me tell you something. There's some things I'll never tell them. Right. Yeah. They're under the blood. Yeah. yeah. I, I I told you this, brother Kyle. She appreciate this. Uh, most most everybody else done heard it, but but I, I'll tell it again. When Joshua and Israel came over that Jordan River, God told him. He said, "I want you to take twelve stones out of the bed of that river, and I want you to take them. I want you to stack them up on the bank." For a memorial. Yeah. Because future generations are going to come ask. Daddy. What mean ye by these stones? And it was a perfect opportunity. To share with the next generation. What God had done for their family. Right. Yeah. Well you got to take every opportunity you get. To share the greatness of our God. What he's yeah. done for you. Yeah. But the flip side of that was. Is that not only did God tell them to take 12 stones out of the river to put on the bank. But God told them take 12 stones off the bank. And put them down in the middle of the bed of the river. Because when that water starts flowing again. Just like when you get baptized in Jesus name. There's going to be some things that are covered. There's going to be some things that are hidden. There's going to be some things that are never going to be exposed again. They'll never be seen. There's some things. I, hey, I'll tell my, my kids real quick. Uh, let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. Uh, I'll set up a memorial. And I'll take them by there. And I'll say you know what. I used to go there on Friday nights. Uh, and I used to live it up. And I used to do this. And I used to do that. And I'm so glad God delivered me from all of that stuff. And I use it as a memorial opportunity. To share with them the greatness of God. But there's some other places, Sister Eileen. There's some other memorials. I know about them. They're a reminder to me. Every time I pass by there, I know what took place there. I know what's down there. I know. Oh, there's some feelings that rise up on the inside of me every time I pass by that place. But I'll never tell my kids about it. I'll never share it with them. I'll, oh, my God, they're hidden. They've been buried. Hallelujah. Oh, the greatness of God is unsearchable. You'll never know, friend, how good. There's some things that Brother Dunn could stand up and he can tell us about the goodness of God. But the greatness of God is unsearchable. There's some things about him you'll never know. There's some things about her she'll never stand up and testify about. But she knows God's been so good. He's been so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been so good. Yes. I'm just bragging on God tonight. I'm just bragging on the goodness of God tonight. Uh, I had you stand way before I was planning on it, but I'm not going to finish it. Hallelujah. That's all right with me. Ah, uh, look at verse number eight. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I said the Lord is gracious. Hallelujah. And he's full of compassion. Slow to anger. Anybody can shout about that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise. The Lord is gracious. 
and full of compassion. Yes, yes. Slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over. Look at that. Are over. Brother Dunn, what you told me the other day, I was kind of like, what? But I'm telling you, my friend. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. And thy saints, everybody say that means me. And thy saints shall bless thee. Come on, saint of God, you ought to bless him. You ought to bless him. You ought to extol him. You ought not to be ashamed or afraid to lift your voice to extol him. Is he great? Oh, how great thou art. You know how great he is? You ought not to be here tonight. You didn't deserve. You didn't do nothing to deserve to be here tonight. Oh, hallelujah. If I was, oh, hallelujah. I could, hey, let me, let me tell you, I could remind you of what you really did deserve. But I'm trying to be positive tonight and let you know you didn't deserve to be here. You didn't do nothing to earn a spot in his church. But the word of God says the Lord is gracious and he's full of compassion. In other words, he looked at you in your pitiful state. And he was gracious. That means he gave you favor when you didn't deserve it. He's full of compassion. Hallelujah. He's concerned about his people. He's sympathetic about his people. Full of compassion. I like this part. I'm like, I'll, I'll end it here. Just, just because. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. You know what that told me earlier today when I was reading this and just jotting some notes down? That lets me know that the mission statement of God is mercy. Brother Dunn, he gave me a word the other day. He said, God would rather be merciful than be right. Now, he's right in everything he does. But his mercy is superior. It supersedes everything else. He said his tender mercies are over all his works. In other words, when God moves, he leads with mercy. I remember one spot where he said, surely, goodness. Oh, we're talking about the goodness of God tonight. I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to brag on God tonight. He said, surely, goodness and mercy. It doesn't matter how far you get away from God, friend. His goodness and His mercy is going to chase you down. He's going to hunt you down. He's coming after you, brother. He's coming after you, sister. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter the mess you've made. Because over the works of God, all His handiwork, everything that He has done, everything that He is doing, and He's doing big stuff, and everything He's even considering doing, mercy is right there at the top of it. Mercy, brother, is right there at the top of what God does. I don't know about you, but that makes me excited because I shouldn't be here. I've made a lot of messes in my life. I've got a lot of regrets. And I'll just step out there on a real thin limb and say I've even made regrets since living for God. I've even made messes since being in the church. 
can I be real vulnerable with you and say, hey, I've even had to repent since being your pastor. But I thank God his mercy is over all. I wonder if anybody wants to come pray tonight. Because I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, as you step out behind that, from behind that seat and you begin to make your way to this altar, guess what's following you? Guess what's right on your heels? God's goodness and His mercy is going to follow you all the way to an altar. Come on, somebody extol Him. Somebody lift their voice. Somebody magnify.
thinking about something. What do you think? You know, Brother Logan and his crew are out here and they're painting the outside of this church and they're they're out here and they're working hard. And I come along, I walk around this building and I find a little old speck that they missed. And I overlook all the good hard work that they've done. And I narrow in on that little tiny speck. Yeah. You missed it. Well, we got a lot of speck people. Uh, yes, right. uh -huh. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm on I, you know what? I have a tendency to be like that sometimes. I do. All the good, great works of God that we that we can focus on. And we try to we try to magnify. I'm telling you folks, it's time to get our perspective. Right now we just got a spec tip. But we gotta get a perspective in alignment with God's perspective. Hallelujah. It's all right tonight. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Here, brother. You're here with me tonight. God doing a marvelous work. I can't explain to you in words what he's done here tonight. Just don't take this lightly. Just don't take this lightly. It was song. Every word that was preached here tonight was of God. We are highly favored. Don't you ever understand? He said his mercy and all that would follow us would follow us all the days of our life. In that chapter that he read to you, there are I like three times that I've noticed that forever and ever. Three times. All it needs is two or more witnesses. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. This is true. This is true what was preached here tonight. You take this to heart. Let me tell you something, brother. You just wait and see what God's going to do with this thing oh, tonight. You wait and see what I tell you. God is going to do things in this thing you can't imagine. more time lift your hands lift your voices i can't add nothing to that i've already said what i have to say come on let the lord speak now let the lord let the holy ghost somebody be sensitive to the holy ghost right now let the holy ghost talk to you right now Greet each other in the name of the Lord. Let the couches know that we are blessed to have them. Let Gigi know we wish her a happy birthday. Let's work for Sunday. Uh, please, ladies, if you're planning on going, get with Sister Wagner before you leave. Amen. Y'all have a good time. You know what? Hey, why don't we do this real quick before we, we dismiss? Let's pray for our ladies' trip that the hand of God would be on them. Father, we love and appreciate you, God. Our ladies that are going to be traveling. Saturday, God, I pray your hand would be upon them to give them travel and mercies, God. God, I know your word says that goodness and mercy is going to follow them. But, God, I pray that you would go before them and go with them as well. But also follow them, God. 
I pray that your goodness and mercy would be round about them everywhere they go. That your hand would be on them. You'd give them favor, God. And you would protect them and bring them home quickly. Yes. Quickly. Bring them home, God. Please. Please, I beseech you, Lord, bring them home. In Jesus' name. Y'all greet each other in his name. Thank you. Thank you.